So when we're looking at this one, guys, again, to find the zeros, the main important thing that we want to look into is setting it equal to 0. The main important thing we want to do is setting it equal to 0, right? And then factoring out a GCF, which again comes helpful in this case. Oh, OK. Well, let's think about this. Now, inside these parentheses, x cubed is a cube number. And 27 actually fell off the wall. It's between 8 and 64. But 27 is actually a cube number as well. 3 times 3 is 9, times 3 is 27. OK? Huh? Oh, well, no, I started looking at it. And I'm like, oh, it's supposed to be up there, but it's not actually up there. Um, so the main important thing, guys, is again, by applying the formula, if you guys look at, these, if you guys look at the formulas, right? so we have a sum of two cubes a cubed plus b cubed geez, equals a plus b times b squared minus a b plus, I'm sorry, a squared, what am I doing? If you guys look at that, um, the important thing I want you guys to understand is what we really need, yes? That's wrong. So when we're, when we're looking at this, guys, if we have the sum of two cubes, what I need is the cube root of those two terms, right? So a cubed, a b cubed, I need to figure out what a and b is. So if I'm looking at this example, what's the cube root of x cubed? x. What's the cube root of 27? 3. OK. Now. I can plug that now. I just got to figure out. So if I know a and b, I got to figure out what a squared or you know x squared is. A times b, which is really three times x, and then b squared, which is really three squared. Okay. Now to find my linear factorization, I'm sorry. To find the zeros, I can set each one of these equal to zero. But I'm gonna if I. So again, what do I do with this three though here? What does that three do? Does anybody remember? What the 3 did? Factor. It, well, it's just a scalar. All that 3 does is like stretch and compress the graph. So it's not actually becoming a 0. You can actually divide that 3 out. It's not affecting any of the zeros. Now, if we set these both equal to 0, in the first example, or one of the examples we did, this was factorable. But we have a problem here. Because when we try to factor this, what two numbers multiply to give you 9, add to give you a negative 3? 3 is nothing. You have an issue, right? It's not factorable. So we got to go back to the quadratic formula, or we could use completing the square. But if we complete the square, then we're going to have 3 divided by 2, and it's going to be a little bit more confusing. So I'll go ahead and write the quadratic formula. Opposite of b, plus or minus, square root, b squared minus 4 times a times c, all over 2a. That's the sum and difference of two cubes. No. I said I would provide it to you. But for those of you that are ahead of the game, you never know where that might come up. Um, so I'd recommend I wrote it down for you guys to have it in there. Now, all I'm going to do is find my a, which would be 1. My b is negative 3, and my c is 9. I'm just going to plug them in. So therefore, I have 9 minus 36. Yes, Cord, you got this? Yes, sir. OK. 2 times 1, which is 2. Now, 9, ti 9 minus 36 is going to be a negative 27. Why? If you have $9 and you borrow, OK. Hold on, hold on. Let's. Go through this. It's going to kind of get a little confusing the way I'm about to write this. But it's not any more confusing than what we've already done. That's the important thing. The numbers look a lot more confusing because it's fractions, ra radicals, and imaginary numbers. But if you guys understood the process that I previously went over, this is no different. The main important thing is we've got to remember how to simplify a square root of 27 or negative 27. So if we'll just kind of do this over to the side here real quick. Square root of negative 27, if we break this down into cube numbers, can be rewritten as negative 1 times 9 times 3. 
Would you guys agree with me? This graphs? So that can be rewritten as negative 1 times the square root of 9 times the square root of 3. Square root of negative 1, we said, was the imaginary unit i. Square root of 9 is 3. And then we have the square root of 3. So we'll have x equals 3 plus or minus 3i square root of 3 all over 2. Now, you can also need to understand that 2 can be divided into both of these terms. Okay, either one of those works, but the reason why we want to write it in this format is I'm about to show you guys what this would look like in linear factorization form. So the zeros are not that bad. The zeros are, we already know the zero is where? Negative 3. So we could say the zeros are x such that x equals negative 3 and 3 halves plus or minus 3i radical 3 over 2. All you're doing is taking now zeros and then our other factor 0, which I didn't solve for. And we get that. Does anybody have any questions on how I got the zeros? Zero. Yes. Mm -hmm. Huh? Yeah, three zeros and what's the power? Very good to go. All right? Now, I want to mention one more thing to you guys. If again, if you know the zeros, Allie, if you know the zeros and you want to find the factor, just set your zero equal to, or set your, um, set your uh, x equals equal to zero. That is your factor. Wasn't x plus three a factor? Right, so that was kind of, those are kind of easy to go back and forth with. This, yes, what's your question? That's such that. So guys, if you look at this, if I wanted to set this equal to zero, what mathematical operations would I be doing? Would I be subtracting 3 halves? Yes? And would I subtract 3i squared of 3 over 2? Yeah. So my factor would look like this. x minus 3 halves minus 3i squared of 3 over 2 equals 0. But that is my factor. It looks really confusing. But it's the same process as what I did over here. You're just getting everything over to the same side to equal 0. So when I ask you to find the linear factorization of a problem like this, brain is like exploding. If I ask you to find the linear factorization, sorry, i got to erase that. I'm going to rewrite them. You're going to write y equals x plus 3 times x minus 3 halves uh, minus 3i square root of 3 over 2, which I just wrote, times x minus 3 halves plus 3i square root of 3 over 2. Okay, This is the beautiful thing about this class. 